Hi, this is Debbie and today I'm taking a look at the new Build a Flower Camellia set from Altenew. Moving forwards, Altenew will be releasing a Build a Flower set on the 15th of each month to coincide with their monthly newsletter. The Camellia set is the stamp layering set to create one large bloom with three layers and one leaf sprig with again three layers. And then there are two sentiments. The set comes with the matching die. The individual stamp and dies won't be available separately, they will only come together as the set. I'm using the Mini Misty today and I will be stamping the flower and leaves several times and this is one of the advantages of having a stamp positioner as once you've aligned your stamps correctly you can stamp multiples really quickly and easily. I've placed a piece of Nina Solar White card in the Misty, I did the base layer for the flower on the door of the Misty and then stamped the layer in Altenew Rose Quartz Ink. I stamped this layer twice to get a better darker impression and then repeated the stamping on a couple of other pieces of card so that I would have multiples at the end. The trick when stamping multiple images is to make sure the card is positioned in the same place in the misty each time. The easiest way to do this is to tuck the card into the corner and make sure you do that each time you stamp. Before stamping the next layer, I like to make sure the first layer is good and dry as I think this gives a crisper impression if each layer is dry before stamping the next. Alternately make it very easy to align the layers in stamp layering set as on the back of the packaging they have a guide showing which areas of the two layers to watch out for when aligning them. So for the second layer you can see that there are several places indicated with a blue line on the instructions. Aligning this second layer with those areas on the first layer will ensure that the stamp is in the correct position. Now that I've got that layer lined up, I'm going to stamp this layer in Altenew Puffy Heart Ink. I will again stamp this layer twice to make sure I get a good solid impression and then I'll repeat the process on the other pieces of card to create my multiples. Again I'm drying the pieces before moving on to the final layer. For this layer, the packaging indicates to align the areas marked with a yellow line and having got my stamp in position, I'm stamping this last layer in Altenew Purple Wine Ink. To get some good definition for the shadow areas, I stamped this layer three times and then repeated this for the other pieces of card to complete my multiples. I followed the same process for the leaf sprig as I had for the camellia, stamping the base layer twice in Altenew Frayed Leaf Ink on several pieces of card and then lining up the second layer and stamping that in Forest Glades. For the final layer I used Evergreen and then I lined up the matching dies over the leaf sprigs and the flower and ran them through the Big Shop machine to die cut. I repeated for the multiple images too so that after all the stamping and die cutting was finished I was left with a colourful bouquet of blooms and leaves. Each of the camellia flowers is approximately three inches wide so a collection of three blooms and leaves such as this fills about a six inch square area. This would be great for a larger project or scrapbook page, but for my card I decided to let one of the large flowers take centre stage. I've put a panel of grey card as a nice neutral background, and I thought I'd break things up a bit by stamping one of the sentiments from the set on a strip of white card. I've placed the card in the misty and stamped the sentiment in this fine onyx black ink, which is my favourite ink to make sure you get nice, crisp and easily legible sentiments. I've then prepared the card base by cutting a piece of white card lengthways at four and a quarter inches, and then scrolling up five and a half inches to create an A2 side folding card. With all the elements now complete, it's simply a case of adhering them to the card base. I really like using foam adhesive as I like the extra dimension that it gives. And so I've added the foam adhesive to the back of the grey layer, white sentiment strip, flower and the leaves, and then starting from the base up and adhering them one by one. I trimmed the overhang of the sentiment strip with scissors, and then I did add the leaves in place first before finally positioning the camellia. I wasn't sure whether to add any sparkle or not, but then decided a few clear sequins would add interest without competing with the flower, and I did those with some Ranger Multimedium in matte. That completes this look at the Build a Flower Camellia set, which is the first in a monthly Build a Flower series from Altenew. I'll leave links in the YouTube description below to the products that I've used today, as well as a link to the coordinating blog post over at LimeDudaDesign.com. I want to thank you for joining me today, and if you've enjoyed this tutorial, I'd be delighted if you subscribe to this channel. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.